Okay, so welcome to this first video in this playlist on information and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the intrinsic uh, coagulation cascade, basically. So, intrinsic coagulation cascade. And it's so called the intrinsic coagulation cascade uh, because unlike the extrinsic coagulation cascade, it doesn't require um, a protein from outside of the blood to activate it, basically. Intrinsic coagulation cascade. Okay, so um, firstly let me tell you what coagulation, exactly what coagulation is. Coagulation is the process of turning fibrinogen, which is a protein within the blood, so there is a protein within the blood known as fibrinogen, or you can call it inactive factor 1. So this is factor 1, okay? Um, factor 1, and it's all done in Roman numerals when we're talking about clotting factors. And coagulation is the process of converting fibrinogen into fibrin, or factor 1A, as it's called. And I'll drop the factor, because otherwise I'm going to end up writing factor a lot in this video. So I'll write 1A to show that it's the active factor 1, okay? And then what happens is that this fibrin monomer, so if I draw fibrinogen, how should I draw fibrinogen? Um, an analogy, let's have an analogy. An analogy is that fibrinogen is kind of like a bead with no hole for it, okay? And then fibrin is kind of like a bead where you've drilled a hole in it, okay? And now, basically, what we're going to do is thread all the beads on a, sh on a piece of string, basically, and create this, um, uh, this string of beads, basically. And that's uh, a fibrin strand, basically. So what we do is we take an individual fibrin monomer and we polymerize them together to make a fibrin strand. And so that is the process of coagulation, this conversion of, conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin, and then fibrin forms fibrin strands. So what you get is these protein strands forming in the blood, and it basically forms a meshwork. Okay, and uh, we're going to see how this formation of a meshwork is very important in hemostasis. We'll see that later. And it also happens, you also get um, coagulation occurring if um, you've got a bacterial infection in a certain site. You get fib uh, coagulation happening to prevent, to try and produce like a web, a mesh, uh, through which bacteria cannot move, basically, to try and prevent the bacteria from going from that area into the blood and becoming a systemic infection. Uh, so coagulation is a, is, a, um, so is a process that happens in many um, pathological circumstances. It also happens uh, in, um, in um, thrombosis, basically, where, which is a truly pathological circumstance. So it's an important thing to understand. So this process of converting fibrinogen, which is an act inactive protein in the blood, into fibrin, which is an active protein that can be then um, polymerized into these fibrin strands, that's known as coagulation. Okay, and this is going to be very, very important in uh, physiology and pathology. Okay, so coagulation. Right, so the intrinsic coagulation cascade, let's have a look at when it's activated. So we'll look at the, um, the typical uh, physiological example of when it's activated, which is if you get damage to the endothelium of a blood vessel. So let's say here we have a blood vessel, okay? And basically, this blood vessel is lined by endothelial cells. So, how should I draw this? Let's take a cross section of our blood vessel. So, here is our blood vessel. Now, let's take a cross section of it so that we can see the endothelial cells. So, I'm going to take a cross section through here, basically. So, I'll get something that looks kind of like this. And basically, you have cells sort of lining this blood vessel, and we'll have two of them, sort of like so. So here's one endothelial cell, and here's the other. And basically, they're often described as being like fried egg cells, because you have this center bit where their nucleus is, and then the rest of their sort of um, structure 
is extremely thin and just sort of forms the wall of this very small blood vessel. Okay, now underneath the endothelial cells, so these are the endothelial cells, what you have is a what's known as a basement membrane, which is basically made up of collagen mainly. So you have this basement membrane of collagen sitting underneath the endothelial cells. So this is a support, if you like. So if you want to talk about layers of blood vessels, well, this is a capillary, so it might not work completely, but you have tunica media, which is this endothelial cell there inside, and then you might describe this basement membrane potentially as uh, your connective tissue layer. Okay, right, so we've got this basement membrane going all the way around uh, the um, peripheral, peripheral aspect of these endothelial cells, so this is the basement membrane. Okay, right, so now um, the um, starting process for the co intrinsic coagulation cascade is some sort of damage to the endothelial cells, and the principal thing that sets the coagulation cascade off is that you expose uh, the um, you expose the collagen of the basement membrane, basically. So what's going to happen? is some sort of damage is going to occur to this endothelium. So I'll draw the endothelium out, now damaged. And basically what's going to have happened is you're going to get a hole in that endothelium and the blood, the contents of the blood, is going to be exposed to that collagen basement membrane. And now what's going to happen is the clotting factors which are in the blood are going to start uh, the um, coagulation cascade, basically. And I should say, these coagulation, coagulation factors, or clotting factors, or whatever you want to call them, they are usual constituents of the blood. They are always in your blood. They should be in your blood. If you're a healthy person, you should have coagulation factors in your blood. And they are made, basically, by the liver. So I'll put that little piece of information down somewhere. Coagulation factors made in the liver, or clotting factors is the old name for them. Coagulation factors is probably the better name for them, because clotting, um, well, it's a, it's a name that you will still hear. It's very pervasive in um, society. Uh, clotting factors, they're made in the liver. They come from the liver. So I'll put an arrow going to them, and then they come from the liver. Right. Anyway. When these coagulation factors become in contact with this um, collagen now that's of the basement membrane here, so we've got exposure of the basement membrane, and there's now collagen being exposed to these uh, coagulation factors in the blood, what's going to happen is that those coagulation factors are going to be activated by the exposed collagen. Now, the first, the first coagulation factor to be activated by collagen is the one that sets off the entire intrinsic coagulation cascade, and this is basically factor 12. So I'm going to draw, oh, what's the Roman numeral for 12? X double 1 there. Factor 12 is going to be exposed to this collagen of the basement membrane, and it's going to basically be activated. So we now say it has been formed factor 12A. Now, factor 12 is the starter of it all, basically, and it's got its own special name. It's not just called factor 12. Factor 12 is, um, has also got another name, and it's known by Hageman factor. So if you ever hear people talking about Hageman factor, they mean factor 12. So, basically, uh, when Hageman factor, or when factor 12, uh, comes into contact with the collagen of the basement membrane, which only happens if you've had some sort of endothelial damage here, uh, then it's converted to activated factor 12, or activated Hageman factor. So this is endothelial damage here. Okay, right. So, uh, you now have this activated Hageman factor, or activated factor 12, in the vicinity of this damaged endothelium. And basically now what it does is it goes on and activates other uh, enzymes of the um, coagulation cascade. It a activates other coagulation uh, factors. Okay, so what happens is that you set off this entire cascade. So here we have this activated factor 12, and basically what it does is it catalyzes the activation of another coagulation 
uh, factor, and this is coagulation factor 11, basically. So factor 11 is converted into factor 11A by activated factor 12, okay? Then it's another process now. The factor 11 goes off and activates another uh, coagulation factor, and this is coagulation factor 9. So coagulation factor 9 is activated to coagulation factor 9A by uh, activated factor 11. Okay, and now uh, activated um, coagulation factor 9 is going to um, activate along with, um, it, it requires a bit of help now. It requires also factor 8A, which has also been activated by factor 12 by the initial collagen. So you get factor 8A and factor 9A together, they basically activate factor 10. So factor 10 is being activated to factor 10A by factor 9A and by factor um, uh, 8A here. Okay, so together they activate factor 10 to factor 10A and what's going to happen next is that factor 10A is the one that now converts the important one. This, this is going to catalyze the important, um, important activation. It's going to activate factor 2, which is so important that it has its own name. It's called prothrombin. Pro, prothrombin. Uh, can we squeeze that in? There we go. Prothrombin. And it's going to activate it to factor 2A, which is called thrombin. And now thrombin is the important one. Thrombin is the enzyme which actually converts fibrinogen, or factor 1, into fibrin monomers, or factor 1A. So, the th uh, thrombin enzyme is then going to convert factor 1, or fibrin, fibrinogen rather, fibrinogen, the inactive factor 1 is called fibrinogen, so this is 1, into 1A, which is fibrin, okay? So you've now got fibrin being made in the vicinity of this uh, damaged endothelium, this exposed basement membrane. And now uh, fibrin, uh, or activated factor 1A, is going to be assembled into the fibrin strands. So it's going to be polymerized, and it's going to be polymerized by uh, the enzyme uh, factor 13A, basically. So factor 13A. Okay, right. And uh, 13A has also been activated by the exposure of the collagen. So, in the vicinity of exposed collagen, you get this huge coagulation cascade going on, which is uh, known as the intrinsic coagulation cascade, uh, because it didn't require anything from beyond the blood. All of these coagulation factors, they are found in the blood. So you don't require any coagulation factors from outside of the blood. All of these ones were in the blood already. So all that needs to happen is you get an exposed piece of basement membrane and then this entire cascade will be happening. And basically what's going to happen is in the vicinity of that exposed piece of basement membrane, you are going to get loads of fibrin strands being deposited basically. And these are going to help plug up that gap. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much the intrinsic coagulation cascade. As, we go, we, as I say, we're going to see how it builds up and how it fits in with loads of other processes that are also happening, because this is not, this is not the full hemostatic plug. There is other important uh, components of a hemostatic plug, or a blood clot, if you like. Uh, for instance, platelets are extremely important, but this is the process by which you get coagulation, the act, which is the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin, uh, so that you can make these fibrin strands, and they form an important part of the blood clot or the hemostatic plug. Uh, okay, so that's all for this video.